thanks for joining us. Um, I'm sure people would kind of funnel in. Um, feel free to ask questions um, on the message box um, and we'll have a Q&A after. So to kick us off, um, this is our, I think, second or third exhibition with Space Scribbles. Um, we've only recently founded Space Scribbles as a result of just this COVID response of, you know, where's our community? Like, what is painting? How, how does the converse, how do the conversations now um, become relevant to the changing art world and also capitalism, which is also a huge force in dictating what voices get heard. So we've started featuring artists um, on a monthly, kind of bi-monthly basis and hoping to discover new kind of ways of integrating art, um, music, as well as other sorts of disciplines, hoping to kind of create a new um, dialogue within that space. So today we have Takuya um, from Japan. You're in Hokkaido. Yes. yes. Um, we have Min Young, um, who's originally from Seoul, and now you're in UK, um, and you go to Slade, correct? Yes. And we have Charity, who's also one of my closest friends <laughs> in New York. We're currently in the same city. I'm really happy to be near you. Um, we went to school together. So you went to studio school and now you're just working in your studio um, on Upper West Side. Um, so um, I guess to kick us off, I am going to just kind of throw this question, so start with, um, just throwing some questions out in terms of, you know, um, playfulness, because we, our exhibitions, it's titled Play, Playtime. And when we initially reached out to artists, we were looking at their works and trying to come up with the title. And we decided to group Min Young, Takuya, and Charity together, because one, um, visually speaking, there, there's a kind of risk and also like playfulness that's present in their works. So just to kick us off with this interview, um, could um, could you guys talk a little bit about how playfulness played a role in your search for images or even how you approach art making in your studio, if that's something that's present in how you work? I could, I could actually direct. Um, <laughs> assign us. Um. <laughs> I know, let's do that. Um, so um, Min Young, your yeah. work is incredibly playful. And uh, um, for those of you that missed or haven't seen the actual exhibition, um, I actually have some images that I could show, which I am going to share screen. Perfect. Can you see, can you all see the screen? Yes. Perfect. So, uh oh. So Minyoung, you do some kind of stop motion. Um, how do I do this? So this is one of, <laughs> I, really, um, I really love it. Um, so you do some stop motion animation as well as painting, mm -hmm. which, um, well, how do I do this? Sorry guys, I'm trying really. Yeah, it's hard to moderate and okay, perfect. So these are some of your paintings and you've mentioned that you paint on surfaces that are unstretched. Yes. Um, and you know what we noticed when we were curating the show is that we saw a lot of cats, like almost like this nightmare with cats or some kind of moments when you are surprised at the end, almost like a plot twist and the strange relationship between men and, and creatures. So um, this is like, you know, some people might become uncomfortable like looking at it, but I, I actually find it like pretty humorous, almost like a dark humor, <laughs> like yeah. this bee yeah. falling into this water and they're like chopsticks. So some kind of human activity, which I think it's really interesting. Um, so can you talk a little bit about like, how do you even come up with those images and is playfulness uh, uh, an element of what you're kind of trying to pursue? Uh, actually, my work is a mixture of creepiness and cruelty, but at the same time, the important thing is 
um, that um, it is a mixture of um, humor as well. Um, mm -hmm. So humor plays a big role in my paintings, while mm -hmm. my work uh, expresses my dark experiences, feelings, and um, um, thoughts inside me. Um, humor mm -hmm. offers those um, dark side and allows me to look back um, things from the new perspective. Mm -hmm. So I want to create a um, contradictory situation in which the situation in the work is serious, but not that serious, embodying mm -hmm. the, the encounter between disparate um, elements such as the combination of pain and ridicu ridiculousness, mm -hmm. uh, unfamiliarity and familiarity. Is there a reason why cats are an like kind of like an important element of your work? Yeah. Um, um, so I, I, I think cats are um, one of um, images that I usually um, use in my work because mm -hmm. um, um, I think uh, I keep drawing caddies that they're quite um, similar to um, my habits and um, I love mysterious things um, and I feel like they're surrounded by tons of mysteries as well so I think um, it's because it's the creature that always seems to um, spy on um, uh, spy on um, mm -hmm. curious things and um, doesn't know what it's um, thinking. So they are, therefore, um, cats are uh, always like um, omniscient beings in my works and are expressed as if they know the every um, situation in my works. Okay. And I also see like other animals, which I think it's it's an interesting way of, I don't know, it's it's like imagination. It's almost like this world of imagination of what could have been like if they actually have the ability to like overcome humanity. But that's that's my own projection of how I sometimes read your images or even like um, encounter these stop animations. So thank you for sharing your thoughts. I'm actually just gonna try to take turn and um, move along. So um, here we have Takuya's paintings. And yeah. Takuya, you also went to studio school and you're actually currently in Hokkaido. Um, yeah. And I feel like uh, your, your landscapes are really interesting because one, they have this sentiment or the colors of the Northern Japan. And um, my family is also from Northern Japan. We actually are both from Hokkaido. Um, so I feel very drawn to your landscapes because it's it's something very personal, but also yeah. what makes it interesting is we also both went to studio school. And um, yeah. what what's really interesting is when you kind of carry that kind of sentiment or where you're from through a very Western approach or aesthetics. Um, so some of your works remind me of Matisse, um, just fall, fall vist, um you know kind of this this approach where landscapes are flattened and you know there's um sense of utopia um which i think um in japan japanese culture we do value harmony and we talk about wa which is kind of like the circle of just a circle of peace um but it's a little different from this longing for paradise because we kind of make peace with nature and that nature being part of us um so um can you talk a little bit about like you know um i know this title is playtime but i know that you also have other things that you kind of value in your work um can you speak a little bit about like what exactly or what do you look for in your images when you create those works um <clears throat> i think uh, my subject sometimes like playful because um I put animals and people and then mm -hmm. it's not in here. I've been recently painted like a Buddha and and like not it's kind of funny way and um, and um, yes and I when I did I think the 
playfulness. Yeah, like the image, like the bathing suits and the lady and like these paintings. Mm -hmm. um, like this guy was naked in the beginning, but mm -hmm. I put the like uh, suits on mm -hmm. and and this this guy exists too. Like this 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 guy who plays the cello is um, mm -hmm. the person my neighbor. I I painted him. I I drew him and then I paint. I put the painting in the land. Uh, I put the painting in the landscape. Like mm. like so that kind of like that like my approach is like drawing. Mm -hmm. from the nature okay. and put the figure in the in the landscape okay. and and then those like stories are always like real like i'm not i mean it's like my painting has a lot of imagination but at the same time it's uh, it exists like those giraffe and I mean, like I paint, I drew from, uh, I went to the zoo and I looked at the giraffe and then I drew them. So mm -hmm. all of my image is, um, the stories are like real and then it's okay. around me. It's so maybe that's mm -hmm. why it's personal. Okay. And um, I'm always painting and drawing from the life. So mm -hmm. that makes the, that quality of like Northern Japan of Hokkaido. Mm. Yeah, I, I really like, I don't know, it, it reminds me of home, which is, I think maybe that's not a quality present or quality that could be detected by people maybe outside of that context, but I think that um, the fact that because you're so connected to your surroundings, um, the playfulness just kind of comes through when when it's you're you're experimenting the, with the way that you apply paint. Um, yeah. yeah, I feel like sometimes you kind of go for this tighter kind of paint application where things are pretty in control. And usually, I feel like those works. I'm talking about maybe this piece, for example, it feels a little more controlled in a way that like you have an idea of what it should look like. And I think this is from the series um, Paradise and you were just really imagining what it's like when nature that had existed for such a long time has all these untold history and stories. And now as humans, we're entering into that space. And what does that even look like? Um, so it's a different kind of utopic relationship. Um, and yeah, thanks for sharing. And I would actually get, that would actually be a really good question for the next part about how um, geographical location or time in history changed the way any of you think about your paintings. Um, and this might be more applicable to those of you that had traveled or migrated to other places. So if you have time to think about that, feel free to um, ponder um, as I move on to um, Charity's images. Um, Charity, so, um, I've seen your paintings, um, and I feel like you've kind of, you've kind of ventured into different pockets of, um, subjects that interest you, um, but they still are very much, um, close to the figures that you really love painting. Um, so these are some of the images, um, not all are shown in the exhibition, um, but these are some of the images that you've actually shared with me. Um, so if you want to speak a little bit about, you know, is, is playfulness ever like an element of your work or um, how do you view your images? Um, yeah, feel free to share your thoughts. <laughs> Jump in. Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, you know, what's so interesting is I think um, you were the one that made me think of my work as playful by asking me to mm. do this, um, mm. which might sound silly because um, now that I see it from mm. your viewpoint, I do see that. Um, 
but I think um, I think maybe my process is playful or something. Um, hmm. And it, I feel like almost like I'm not going, I'm not, it might look like I'm trying to be, have playful imagery, but um, I think what I'm thinking of actually mostly when I'm painting, my two biggest like thoughts are like, I really think about composition a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I love geometry and I love, um, I love geometry and I love being able to pull some kind of like humanism out of my subject matter. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's basically everything. Um, I like to paint from life, like landscape um, and figuratively. But even when I was in school, I, I would get, the model would be in front of me and I would not do the, you know, the, I wouldn't, I would play with the, you know, I would be playing with, with the what I was looking at so that it felt right to me when I was like composing these pieces. So um, I remember my teacher used to come by and she'd, she'd come by my easel and just start laughing. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and she'd say, oh my God, I always love coming to your station because you make me laugh. And um, mm. I was really like just painting from life and playing with the composition, like the geometry of what I was looking at and like picking up on anything that the model, like anything I was feeling from the model and just combining mm. those two things. So with, that's a way of playing playfulness, mm. I think. Yeah, so yeah, that, that, have... you brought up a really good point. Sorry, sorry if I interrupted you. Um, yeah. I think playfulness is not necessarily like a casualness. It's It's a type of, for me, it's a type of inquiry. I mean, if you look at children, they play pretty seriously. <laughs> <laughs> they change rules. They they do what feels right and makes sense. And what feels right could be easily taken as like kind of sentimental, but it really isn't when you're when you have like a foundation of you know formal training or even like um, this deep um, kind of yearning to really understand the visual language. Um, what feels right could sometimes be a great asset um, because intuition is kind of largely um, a driving force, I think, in a lot of the ways we paint, a lot of a lot of the images we're drawn to, or even the way we um, just use colors. I mean, it could be, it, it's like endless. Um, so I really love that when you said, maybe it's my process that's playful more than like trying to have fun, like, you know, just kind of put paint on a canvas or even, making playful images um so i think like that's pretty evident because i what i really like about your paintings is that i could see a very strong architectural um structure and i knew you were at some point an architect i don't yeah. know if that has anything to do with the way you organize your perception you know how you translate that experience but i certainly see and it's so satisfying when i could just kind of make out shapes like these zigzag triangle that is kind of you it's like this mountainous area that you can actually like travel with your eyes and um there are some imageries that seem to be adopted from like you know more ancient paintings or even um I know you you like I think you like Giotto and I, I really love Giotto yeah. and there he, he has such a strong sense of composition um but also this like sensibility in the way that he depicts figures um so I think this is from Giotto <laughs> it um, is yeah, yeah I really it's from two I really paintings. love that it's from two paintings and my visit to the uh Parthenon hmm. yeah, Par Parthenon and you were recently you recently came back it's not really recent because we had a whole year pandemic but let's just cancel 2020 and look at 2019 <laughs> You you yeah. came back from a Hohenberg travel award, yeah. So you you actually were really immersed in Italy with yeah. all the images. And I would say like it's so funny because like when yeah I went to um I I was like I was the I was allowed to go anywhere in Europe and I thought I just I kind of froze like a deer in the headlights, and I figured yeah. I should I was like um okay um where should I go. Um, mm. so I just decided to go, honestly, like I'd never been to Italy mm. and I wanted to see things that 
were site specific. So I looked at cave paintings in, Sp in Northern Spain. I, um, I went to Madrid, but I did. And what happened was, you know, I thought, oh, I don't know anything about the Renaissance whatsoever. So I'm gonna look at that. And then mm. I just got pulled. I'm very attracted to very ancient art and sculptures, you know, ancient sculpture. I think from maybe, yeah, my architecture background. Mm. Um, I'm really interested in what lasts like through, t you know, through time, like mm -hmm. what remains after so many years, like what is the thing that we like start, you know, holding higher and higher on a pedestal. And so I think there's some, there's such gravity and weight to that. Um, so mm -hmm. I study those things along with, mm -hmm. you know, this playfulness that I'm hopefully like trying to, entertain myself with inventing. Yeah, thank you. That's perfect because now you gave us a segue. Um, <laughs> and maybe you can answer this or anyone else could take over if you want to. But since we're on this topic, like you were talking a little bit about your time in Italy and how you're surrounded by literally history that is now remain. And it's kind of like a an artifact that tells us about how people communicated or even it, it tells a lot like painting says a lot and which is why it's such a wonderful thing because it's a type, type of language that we are entering into so how do you view your work in a context of art history or even more specifically like the things that you were looking at like how do you kind of make that connection point and the way you create me mm -hmm. or, um That's a good question. You mean, how do I use it? How do I use it? The information? Like if there's any relationship between like what you're trying to do in your work right now, that's mm -hmm. that you're kind of expanding on the conversations that existed before you, um, ah. you could literally answer it in any way, but I would, that's kind of how I would narrow it down to. Yeah. I mean, just from observing, I'm really attracted to sculpture right now. Um, mm. And um I, yeah actually i always have been i should say i didn't know mm -hmm. it until recently anyway um i think what i love so much about different types of sculpture from different time periods is the incredible amount of human connection i feel like humanism like this feeling of of being a human being mm -hmm. and then the beautiful just formal shape and line and the you know the the shape and the form has just been, it's like you, it's like timeless, um, solid um, expression. Even the handprint on the wall mm. is like, when I saw that, I literally got like a, I not cry, but like I got, a, I got really emotional mm. because I felt like that person had just done that yesterday I just felt like I mm. touched their hand too I felt like we were in the same space mm. so that's yeah that's what I'm trying to do yeah that's so beautiful it makes me <laughs> want to cry too <laughs> this is not the time for it but we can talk more about that later I'm we sorry cry later <laughs> I'll cry when I hang up on the zoom call everyone just a heads up um what about you know Min Young and, and Takuya like do you feel like they're there, is there anything about art history or anything in, in the past that kind of either motivate you to paint or things that you, you're really curious about and you want to keep exploring? Feel free to take it away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, my work is like a um, combination of Egyptian art and surrealist context, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Because the, the awkwardness and um, awkward um, expressions and actions taken by the figure in my work are quite mm. similar to images of Egyptian art. Um, mm. In fact, um, I get a lot of inspiration from the art. Um, in particular, um, the expression of the feet, which are mostly expressed by um, side view and mm. if and gestures may be the examples. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I think um, it can be interpreted in the context of surrealism because things are quite fami familiar with us, but um, might not be possible in the real life. Mm -hmm. um, 
can be often seen in my paintings. Mm. So you mentioned like Egyptian art and the almost like this profile view that's kind of you see. So with Egyptian art, you could see everything, which is kind of their 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 how do I say it? Like their intention for it is that not only the image, but like the the mortal body, like there's some kind of significance in how they painted and drew because they want to preserve the existence of that person into the afterlife. Like, do you feel like that's something that you kind of think about in your work or you're more drawn to just the aesthetics of Egyptian art? I think more into the aesthetic uh, aspect. Okay. And that's okay, because I think I love Egyptian I, I love Egyptian art. Like it's actually one of my favorite wings in the Met. Um, I go there all the time. And yeah. um, you've also mentioned surrealists. I, yeah. <laughs> I think like this part is really playful because it's like, you know it's not real, but it's believable. Mm -hmm. And um it's almost like there's this hierarchy of um creature or creation of like cats doing things that are human-like and then there are humans that are either <laughs> they fall victim to the cat or, or they, they always go through some kind of tragedy that's yeah. comical but then there are also like another element of just like things that we I mean I don't know if mermaids exist I doubt that it, they do but th there's an element of like things that you kind of wish to be true um so do you ever think about like those kind of things like I want to have a world full of like all these things or they just naturally come to you as you make your images um I really don't know why I'm I'm fancying those kind of like mermaid and witch images mm -hmm. because, um, I, I think um maybe I'm I was inspired by seeing many um folk tales mm. um when I was very young and many videos like yeah mermaids or something like that yeah so yeah i think that's the why thank you um takuya do you have any thoughts about um kind of like how you think about history our history or like you know painters that you like and kind of bringing inviting them into your studio um, in terms of how you even paint or composition even. Um, if you don't, that's okay, because I have plenty of questions. <laughs> ah, yeah, um, I do. I, I mean, I like some of the painters. Um, I also went to Italy, I, mm. and, and uh, I, what I love about Italy was I like you know, I like looking at, I, I, I did like looking at a lot of sculpture and after Italy, I went to France mm -hmm. and uh, I looked at all those paradise paintings by mm -hmm. Bonnard and um, some other painters mm -hmm. and I particularly liked the lands. Mm. Um, um, he had a huge um, paradise paintings in Paris. Mm. And um, when I looked at that painting, I, I want to paint it. I want to paint like that. Mm. And maybe that was two years ago I went to France and mm. i've been thinking about it and finally i'm like last year and this year i'm finally kind of painting those was able to paint uh those um paradise images mm. and like my ideas i think it's not like something new but mm. i think Originality is very important, but um, I'm not like too worried about it. I just want to paint um, like art 
my opinion art art is like if the heaven exists it's like something between like this world and heaven art is like something in between mm. because we can use imagination we mm. can paint like something it doesn't exist mm. so i think my goal is to paint like something like that like a, maybe i hope art is like a salvation mm. so um, wow I mean, my my that's my goal. I mean, it's I I'm not reaching it, but like my, you know, uh, my goal and and I th I think color, uh, you know, I love colors and um, and um, also to finish the painting, uh, ge uh, geometry is very important for me also mm. to finish the painting because I don't feel it's finished like mm. if it's just um colors so mm. yeah that's a really uh, you just said something really poetic and i think a lot of us i mean i think i assume everybody here does some kind of art or is a painter and i i find that really poetic when you said art is what is between heaven and, and earth um and it reminded me of this quote that my teacher, painting teacher um, from New York Studio School, um, Susanna Coffey, she set us down and we had this discussion one day about what is painting? And, and it doesn't even have to be painting, like what is art? Um, and she said, painting is the one proof that interiority exists. We could share them with the world while our, while our dreams remain locked within our bodies. And I think that's something that we all experience at some point where art is the only safe space. And I, I often feel that for myself um, in a time when there's turmoil and there's a lot of things when you look outside, it's really not that pretty. Um, but art is one safe place because it's, it's a place that we could almost travel far and wide and still come out safe but changed um and i think that's a really beautiful and poetic sentiment that i think um really changes you and i really love that you kind of um have also mentioned how like you don't think that originality is that important when you pursue images and, and art making because it's something that you're always going to be part of and what is original is not it's it's kind of overrated um my opinion maybe I shouldn't so talk so much about my opinions but <laughs> um so this is like a good, really um good place to kind of start opening up like what is it you know in in a world full of so many images and media like how do you even sort through all of it to find images that speak to you um you know how do you how do you allow yourself the space to, to think and process this world when there's so much that demands our attention um, Takuya, do you have any thoughts about like you've mentioned you like Duran and Bernard and all these painters that were before you um, and you're you're kind of hinging on these experience to find your own image like what does that even look like? Um, I like um, the art history like I'm like when I think about art history I love art history I love all these most of the art in the past. Um, but like we talked about originality a little bit uh, just now. Mm -hmm. And um, I think in our history, like I, I kind of fear, not fear, but um, our history, like to be in the art part of our history, I think it has to be very original maybe in the past. Mm. Um, but um, to me, originality is not that important. And mm -hmm. um, I was, I, I mean, I've been, I, I mean, I, it's not about art. I like, I like Beatles a lot and um, mm -hmm. the music. Mm -hmm. And um, like, I like Let It Be a lot, the very famous song everybody knows. Mm -hmm. And 
I mean, I'm not Christian, but this song is about Christian and and then it's like nothing original about it, I guess, the lyrics, mm -hmm. but it's like still moves moves me and then maybe moves other people. And mm -hmm. I I mean that's I think that's uh, important. And uh, the question was, um, what was that question was? <laughs> Do you need help? <laughs> uh, I could say it again. How does risk play? It's, it's in a world full of so many images and uh, media. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I look at a lot of images, but you know, I paint from life. And my painting might look like something something else, but um, I'm taking the image from the nature. So I think it's still something my own. Mm -hmm. So I'm. So that's what um, that's that's my like uh, answer to like. That's my answer for like, you know, not copying somebody's image or, you know, because if, when it's like, when we see so much images in computer and all those places, like it's gonna affect us mm. anyway. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know, I'm just not so worried about it. Okay. Because, yeah. um, I'm painting from nature. Mm. And I think that's that's gonna solve the problem. Hmm. Charity, do you have any um, thoughts about this? Because I know we kind of, we talk and we talk about like, oh, like they're, I mean, trying to find a balance between like absorbing the world. And in the New York City art scene, it's like, that's endless. It's just like openings after openings after openings. And I remember you and I would like go to openings, like five openings in one night. And that's kind of the culture that we are, we live in and, and in a city that kind of is almost oversaturated with art. Um, how do you sort through those images and find what you really are drawn to versus like what sells or even like what's popular? Um, do you have any thoughts about that? Um, I just came up with one while you were saying all that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Um, cause I agree, um, with what Takia said about, um, I, during the pandemic, particularly, I found that being inundated with, I feel like there is a lot of imagery, um, in so many ways. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that, um, studying nature is always a great place to go. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the interior world that we have, and I think, um, you know, sticking very true to that, those two things for me, but the third that I'll add, um, mm -hmm. is, uh, discipline, mm -hmm. um, for myself, um, meaning like sometimes like I will being, being dedicated to figuring something out as an artist, like light, um, space, uh, <laughs> color, I don't know, mm. you know, shadows, whatever it is that I'm interested in and, and being really regular about my investigation. Um, mm -hmm. that for me is how I handle the excessive imagery that's going on, because I do feel like there's, you know, obviously a ton of like, um, narrative, out there and it's sometimes i think who cares you know about your interior world you know um, <laughs> you know what i mean like it's just yeah. so much it's like mm -hmm. um but so i think like very generically like this idea of discipline for myself um is how i'm navigating it mm. and i think um, i'm also experimenting with the idea of time um, I always think about time a lot, but like how much time I spent look at, looking at something, um, will that make, will, what will that bring to the image? 
mm. you know, playing with an image in that kind of fourth dimensional way, um, mm. rather than just, you know, image after image. Uh, I have trouble mm. spending a lot of time on things because I'm, in, I'm, I have fast energy when I work. Um, mm. So I'm trying to slow down. Yeah, thanks for sharing your thoughts. I love that you mentioned discipline, which is something we don't really, we know the discipline of working and discipline of showing up to the studio and like, you know, I gotta just put in the hours, but there's also discipline and restraint. And I think that's not talked about enough. And this is not completely like, you know, what you're saying, but I think when I lived in New York, um, just going into the studio and just painting away. And I realized I've come to a point where I'm just painting for the sake of putting in the hours and going to shows for the sake of just being there. And at some point, like I've kind of lost touch with the, the way I want to speak. You know, painting is a language and I'm not saying one language is better than the other. It's just, you speak, you, we all speak differently. We all have different um, things that we value in the way we articulate. Um, and I find that it's super, it's incredibly important to actually take the time, but also the discipline to restrain um, and really carry questions into what we yeah. make. Um, when COVID first hit, I had no sense of how to navigate this visually. And back before that, I was painting a lot of representational paintings about Hong Kong protests. And it was easy because there's this entry point where there's a strong narrative. It's about injustice. There's also imageries that are already available through journalism. And in every way, the subject matter was more than enough for me to go on for a year. But when COVID hit and I went back to Hong Kong, I think that part of craving for connection had already been fulfilled largely. And I lost touch with what it, what it, what is it? What is my question? And so I just started making a lot of really weird um, just paint splashes on, on a paper. And it didn't make sense for a long time um, until I realized it's actually important for me to start having questions, whether it's about art history, um, what kind of questions do I have for these master painters that I'm not understanding, or even like, what is it that I care about either formally or um, subject matter, but mostly formally. I think formal language is a huge, part of painting um, because you can get really sentimental and ca get carried away by the narrative that you're trying to like capture by saying, oh, it's about these two lovers, you know, um, just getting caught in this turbulent affair. It's easy to kind of attach narratives and meanings, but when, when your painting transcends that kind of script, that's when it becomes timeless. In my opinion, I think it, there's totally something agree. really beautiful about, you know, sometimes religious paintings do that too, where it's like, okay, I get that it's about the Christ and, but the way they paint it is what made that narrative so much more powerful. And I think um, maybe that's not what you're talking about, but I feel no, that- No, I love what you're saying. Um, almost like the narrative is the limitation that they, the you know, the, the boundary that they can then, you know, uh, the limitation they can use, you know, mm. those religious paintings to play with formalism and painterly stuff. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, I love paint, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have to, right? Amazing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I love it. I love it. Um, and I'd like, you know, obviously other media, medium to, I'm actually, yeah, but um, yeah, um, the narr narrative can be the, the limit, you know, I'm saying the wrong word, but I forget what you, the limitation that can help you grow. Um, mm. But yeah, like the discipline of, like I spent the whole, this whole year just studying the art history I never did. Um, <laughs> and we painfully. went to, we went to grad school, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I went to grad school. With, yeah. <laughs> um, knowing only like a handful of artists and then, mm. yeah. Um, and that was you know, I just like, what happens if you know a lot about art, you know, like, let's not ride on the fact that you don't know, like, I didn't know that much art history when I started my MFA. Um, and now I'm like, well, what happens if you do know a lot about art history, mm -hmm. then what do you do? Um, all different ways to have that just by, I love what you said about your experiences too. 
Thank you. I didn't mean to say, hey, guys, now it's my art talk. Um, no, I love it. But <laughs> um, there's one thing that I thought about when you were saying that is that um, for a long time, I've resisted art history. And this may not be applicable to everyone, but I know that there is a sect of artists that say, I don't want anything to do with art history. Like, I don't want to be influenced by that. And also, like, I'm afraid that the more I look at it, the more it would affect the way I work. For me personally, I just hate reading and I always feel this sense of not unworthiness, but I compare and it's hard for me to be around like great painters in the history. And I, and I just tend to be burdened by it because I felt like, how do we even unpack art history? Like, how do we even kind of understand art for what it is when it's such a big thing? You know, it's so much bigger than you and it's you know, when you look at Egyptian art, you can't help but to look at other forms of art. Um, same thing with like contemporary art. I mean, it, it came from, it came through so many generations of art that I felt like when I'm looking at one thing, it's almost like a computer screen where you have like 20,000 tabs open all at the same time and you're trying to absorb it simultaneously. And I was burdened by it when I went to grad school because I felt like I couldn't even get myself through that door so I just completely shut that door. And then it wasn't until I actually graduated, you know, from New York studio school that I realized, you know what, it's actually okay if I don't want to talk to certain painters, meaning it's okay if I don't really like certain painters or certain art movements, I don't need to force myself to understand every single thing. And I kind of have this image of just like going to a dinner party. It's this giant mansion. You walk through the door and you see tables, just filled with tables and all the painters are just sitting there talking to each other and I realized it's okay for me to just to start with it's a buffet of conversations that are happening all at the same all at once and it's okay for me to just go over and talk to the painters that I want to talk to choose the table that I want to be part of and kind of go off from there but that's just my little sentiment and um, I'm so glad that you kind of brought up the discipline and just all these other parts of art making that don't really get talked about enough um, because it's easy to talk about art through art, but it's when you start adding the human part of what it means to be an artist, I think that's when it gets interesting. Um, so this is maybe more applicable as a question for Min Young and Takuya, because you both kind of have this, you both, you know, you're Min Young, you're, you're originally from Seoul, Korea, and Takuya, you're originally from, I believe, Tokyo. Did you grow yes. up in Tokyo? And uh, then you, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then you both kind of went and studied art in the, you're in UK and then you're in, um, you were in America at some point. Like, has that changed the way you kind of think about images at all? Like, how does that geographical location affect the way you think about um what you make um i don't know um yeah you can go first Takuya. i don't know it doesn't matter okay um yeah i don't know if i can answer well but um i'm currently i'm teaching art in my in my in my studio here uh with my wife and um my wife went to school in tokyo and um, the school system here in America is very different. Um, um, uh, right now, I have a um, high school student. Uh, she wants mm. to go to um, art school in Tokyo, mm. and uh, I have to, I have to help her to like pass the ex exam. Uh, they have a very uh, difficult exam it's like you have to you have to draw like really well like but it's the drawing in the sense not like a studio school or maybe people uh, for learning in America it's like so like the style style here is like like they're not, they don't think about composition so much. It's like, mm. they're like really focus, 
focusing on the surface, I think. Mm. Um, mm. Like the surface, like if you draw the bottle, like it really looks like a bottle. Like mm. it's like amazing, like by the first look. And mm. um, that's the drawing people are doing here before they go to college, mm. art school. Otherwise you don't get into the art school. So I think that if I, if I went to school here, art school here, maybe I, I will become completely different kind of painter. Um, because um, maybe because I was educated in America, like just doing the surface work, it's uh, not very important but it's like so much importance here. It's kind, it's kind of sad, but because like surface work, I think you can do it later in, in your life. Like you don't, you know, in the beginning you should be experimenting and do a lot of different kind of things. Yeah, I think what you're saying about surface work, I think you're also talking, like you're talking about like that realistic capturing of of images so you're trying to render an image yeah that it's like a rendering look... yeah so you, you said that's not in you know so what do you think is different for your work like let, you, you've mentioned like if you stayed you might have done that but instead you've kind of took on a different path and what are some things that are important then um i think it's like if it makes sense or not, but artwork has like a spirit, spirit, mm -hmm. and also uh, the soul. Mm -hmm. And um, the soul exists in the painting, like maybe the volume, you know, but if we don't feel the volume, that doesn't matter, like uh, if it's abstract painting or um, representational painting, uh, we, we might not feel the soul. So mm -hmm. maybe like doing a lot of rendering, maybe there's a um, spirit in the painting, mm -hmm. but maybe not very soulful, mm -hmm. my opinion, but you know, I'm, that might not make sense. <laughs> and, uh, That's okay. <laughs> I think it makes sense, but it might mean different things to different people when you say soul and spirit. spirit. And um, what's the difference between? Right, exactly. Um, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, it, I, I was like a, a famous Japanese poet. Uh, was writing about this and then it really um, it really um, like the bell in my in my hmm. brain you know yeah um, yeah he was writing about Paul Klee and mm -hmm. and uh, he said um, most of the abstract painting don't have a soul has a spirit Mm. And uh, he said, um, Paul, but Paul Klee's paintings, it's kind of like abstract paintings, mm -hmm. but has soul and the spirit at the same time. And then I kind of understand what he's saying. Mm. Yeah, maybe that also speaks to the timelessness, the quality of timelessness when, when Charity was kind of alluding to like time in painting. And I think when we talk about time, we're talking about something permanence and something of weight. Um, and I think when you talk about soul and spirit and painting, which I think it, it could easily get kind of carried away into that different realm, different kind of conversation. But I think there's a reason why certain paintings kind of draw us. And I, I don't think it's just that visual aesthetics. It's, it's more, there's a weight of gravity. Um, that pulls us in. And I think 
it's such an it's a mirror that you're kind of invited into um to kind of like once again the interior world of someone which i think is is soul um so yeah i appreciate you sharing that because i think it's it's an important element of of works that we don't really get talked about at least in the art shows that I go to in galleries in New York or we don't talk about that because there's no there's no um quantifying factor there's no measurement of that like how do you even measure you know soul the soul soulfulness in painting um so um we're getting close to 10 30 so I'm you guys are more than welcome to submit questions um but I do want to ask Min Young this one thing before moving on to the Q&A. Um, you kind of experiment with the stop motion animation as well as painting. Um, have you always done those two things, you know, even when you were in Korea or did you just start kind of pursuing this multi interdisciplinary work when you went to Slade? Oh yeah, um, like um, before the Slade, I used to um, have a exhibition like Soul Expansion in Seoul. At that time, I um, I made some animation works and ceramic works, uh, also some drawings. Mm -hmm. But I think um, I think what Takwa mentions is very similar to um, in Korea situation like um, you um, like college exam. Mm. It's very similar, um, and I feel that the work is very changed um, significantly over a an year and a half in the UK. Um, in fact, um, the, um, the theme of my work has not been changed for four years mm. while working in the Korea, in Korea. But um, the way I deal with it and the way I look at it and um, the media I use is totally changed. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, I think the imp impact is probably um, due to the gloomy weather in the UK and uh, some <laughs> loneliness and um, the fact that I'm a foreigner and I'm a stranger here um, affected me to focus on painting. Uh, so, um, and the, the thing is, um, the lockdown period made me, made me, um, focus on paintings and other works. Yeah. So I tried to make some animations to not to, not to get bored. Yeah. So I, I was trying to many different ways to make some works. Yeah, I think it kind of makes sense now when you were talking about like being a foreigner and, and I kind of sense that weird, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but like the, di um, what is it called? Diaspora is such a, such a thing in, um, in art. Um, you do actually, I mean, I, for a long time, I, I paint images and I think there's always a, like a longing to be understood, the longing to kind of fit myself into a corner of a room, whether it's art history or a culture. Um, and I like that, you know, you're kind of taking that, um, taking that with you into your work. Um, yeah, it's always interesting looking at your animation because there's always like an element of either accident or this like ill intention or some kind of danger that um, doesn't always get resolved. And I feel like that's kind of sometimes a mentality that I carry as, as a foreigner. Like, I have no idea where my home is anymore. Like, I grew up in Hong Kong as a half ja Japanese, half Chinese kid, moved to America when I was 17, went to Florida, which had no Asians whatsoever. And like, <laughs> you kind of pick up habits on like survival. And um, so it's, it's funny when I kind of see those elements coming through your your work it's it's like trying to survive through this this mishap or some kind of accidents and sometimes it doesn't work most of the time I feel like in your animation it just ends up being 
<laughs> kind of just a tragedy but it's funny because it's like a it's like a it's like this dark humor um so i appreciate your thoughts and thank you for sharing um so now we're actually at 10 30 and i think it's a good time to kind of go into the q a um thank you for staying with us so far because i feel like i have no idea what i'm doing this is my first time ever and i really appreciate just the participation by staying <laughs> Please don't go. Um, so thank you for staying. Um, so Jacob asked a question and feel free, um, Charity, Takuya and, and Min Young, feel free to answer if you feel like you, you wanna say um, answer. Um, so something more personal, at what point in your lives did you decide to become painters and how did you know? Is there like a light bulb moment or it just gradually happened? Like well, what's your what's your story? Um, I, okay. I wanted to become a painter kind of late uh, because, um, um, I mean, when I was in high school, uh, I started like drawing and um, I was interested in painting and art, but I, I really didn't know anything about paintings and I went to college and you know I wanted I wanted to become an artist but I didn't think I could um you know I I didn't think I could make a living with it so my my dad was a architect so mm -hmm. so I so maybe I will do I I want to become an architect and I started taking drawing class in college and after that i really wanted to become a painter <laughs> um maybe i was about 20 or something like that and you never so, look back you're still here yeah yeah, yeah i'm still yeah i'm still here i'm still doing the paintings and I'm kind of believing myself. Um, I'm gonna do this and like, yeah, so that's my answer. So I just have like a really brief thought as you were saying that, and I'm, I'm looking at the screen. So I see 13 people on the screen. I don't know some of you, but I, I'm pretty sure at least 80, 90% of us are painters we're insane <laughs> we're doing this yeah. i just need to say this because it's i think it's it's a wonderful thing but i sometimes feel like why are we crazy enough to actually you know do this thing um so i'm just kind of expressing my my um sentiment um what about you charity i know I, you didn't paint for a while and then you came back to school for it yeah i came back i Oh my gosh, ditto. My dad was an architect also. And oh. I I um I knew I want I like I'll say I always knew I wanted to be an artist um forever, like when I was really little. Um but I also, you know, I I liked math a lot and um I liked writing. So anyway. I went to school for architecture in high school. I knew I wanted to be a painter, but my parents were like, no, we're not sending you to school to do that. So um, I just became an architect um, and I tried to paint. And then three or like four years ago, I, I, it really was very recently four four or five years ago, I started, I just decided I never wanted another job ever again. And um, because I wanted to paint. Um, so I just, uh, I, I completely jumped off the cliff. Like mm -hmm. I had no idea how to make money as an artist, but I, I knew when I was really little, that's what I wanted to do. And I just, I didn't do it for a real, you know, I just didn't do it for most of my life basically. And then um, a couple of years ago, I thought, I just I just closed my eyes and moved forward. Um, so 
how has it been like has it been like yeah. a rewarding oh it's completely thing? changed my life like i'm so glad i did it because i always wanted to I knew I wanted to do it before I even really had drawn a lot. Um, when I was, mm -hmm. some of my very earliest memories are of drawing, like with crayons. Like I can remember mm -hmm. drawings I made. Like I remember how it's that interior space that you, that I felt so safe to just completely explore. Very safe space. Not like the world wasn't safe, but when I say safe, I mean a paradise. Like mm -hmm. this is where I want to be. Um, um, and also this is where I communicate the best. This is where I, this is where I'm mm. like in my best self when I'm actually making, um, and I tried all these other things. Um, but yeah, I think what happened was one day I just had this realization. It dawned on me that other people were artists, like other people were doing it and yeah. they were, they were alive, you know? And I was like, um, maybe I can do it too. <laughs> Lorraine just had a laugh when he said they were alive. No, but it's kind of true, right? I, I think true. that's a I'm like, really they're not starving to death. <laughs> maybe. Right. And even if they are, it's it yeah. it must be worth it for them to going through that. <laughs> I mean, maybe starvation is a is an exaggeration because we are all really fortunate enough to live in a society that is rich and wealthy. Um but it's it's true. Like I think it, it, the narrative of starving artists is so prevalent that you believe you can't thrive because you've committed to your, yourself to the search of beauty and that perf I know, uh, perfecting that language. Um, so yeah, I, I think I, I understand that. And I remember before I graduated, we graduated, I was telling you, maybe I won't be an artist. It, it's too much. And I don't, if you, I don't know if you remember like me telling you that and you, I, re I just remember you looked at me with certainty and said, I'm just going to do this. Like, I'm like <laughs> full on, like, I don't, I'm not looking back. And I remember, man, like she, I wish I had that kind of force. Um, so I remember that being really striking and that actually encouraged me a lot. Cause I realized like, if, if she said she can, if she said, if charity says she's going to do it, maybe <laughs> I can do it too. You know, like we can all suffer together <laughs> and hopefully make it yes. to the other end. Um, <laughs> So yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, Jacob had asked or said he likes Takuya's story of seeing a painting in France and it's still challenging him today. I'm wondering if Min, Min Young or Charity can remember specific encounters with works of art that had a strong impact. So maybe Min Young, if you could talk a little bit about if there's any artwork that you've encountered um, that had really changed you or had a strong impact. Well, every time I look at um the artist um I don't know you you know him um Jan Shuban Meyer. Uh, I love um his animation works, and I I was so inspired by seeing his um works every time, and um his works um made me think of think about another perspectives and another compositions, so. I can when whenever I am depressed and I I was struggling with um my works, um I um I watch his animations or his um, works a lot, so I can deal with some that period. I mm. think. Thank you. Um. Can any of you speak to how your paintings have entered into your life? This is actually actually a question from Madeline. Um, can you speak to how your paintings have entered into your life? We often talk about how we our understanding of the world influences our work, but how do your paintings shape the way you view the world? It's a it's kind of a complex question. So. Um, it's essentially like, how do your paintings shape the way you view the world um, instead of the other way around? We often talk about the external influences, like the paintings we see, the people we encounter, the culture, narr cultural narratives that we have been part of affecting, affecting the way we work. But is, is there like a reverse relationship where because you're painting those images, because you're kind of carrying those questions into the way you 
um, paint or or work, like, has that changed your perspective on your environment? I can say one thing. Um, mm -hmm. I know, like, this is gonna, like, whenever I'm in, whenever I was in, like, an art class, like, at school, a lot of times the teachers would, like, make comments about art, and I would just be like, that's a that's totally like, I'm going to use that in my actual life, um, whatever you just said. Um, and so I feel like that happens a lot. Like whatever process I'm involved in with my own artwork is can be a, little, a bit reflective of maybe how I'm going through life as well. Mm. Like we were talking about the, you know, we were talking about discipline before I'm finding that helpful to get through the pandemic. Um, um, certain types of discipline about, you know, for, um, and then also intuition's a big thing that I'm, um, interested in my intuition and what, when I suppress it and when I indulge it. Um, mm -hmm. and that's very much happens when I'm working and in life, like I'm, tr you know, how, how can I trust because we're so inundated with so much. It's like, you know, you, I just think it's interesting to, you know, your intuition, how much you rely on it and when to not use it. Anyway, sorry, I'm repeating myself. Those are two things. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's a difficult question, right? Because it's like, how, how aware can you be in the way you live life? I mean, yes, certainly there are like consciousness and like all that stuff. But I think like, because it, it's such a big, it's such a, part of your life that you don't even really think about how you necessarily view the world which is why I think like conversations with artists are always so helpful because you realize they don't think like we do and when we when we talk about art it's exciting because it's like oh I see this uh from Giotto or you know I see this from all these other painters that you know kind of carry certain perspectives and when you discuss it that's when it gets interesting um but I love this question because it's it makes me think a lot too like how has that changed how has that reflected you know the growth or how um my process had evolved and i think this is like an ongoing kind of dialogue for ourselves but also like amongst painters um in terms of like how kind of like that synergy between art making and also like living um so thank you for taking up the challenge to answer this because I would have no way of knowing what to say. Um, from Sachika, how do you cope with or make sense of the audience perception of your work? Um, you know, because it might vary from what you intended it to be. So when that happens, like, does it affect your process? Um, do you have any thoughts? Maybe Takuya or Min Young, you guys, one of you could answer this if you would like. Uh, is that means like something if somebody said uh, like while you're painting or like like unfinished painting and then somebody look at it and then say something and then mm -hmm. if I change my approach is that yeah so I think it's it's more or less about reception like how people receive your paintings that are different from what you meant would uh, you then change I, I hope that's what I'm saying Sachika like if you can correct me, um, feel free to type in the box, but that's kind of what I gather from the question. Yeah, um, so basically what I was, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so basically my question, like I struggle with that a lot is like the kind of, not just the message, but what I intended for my final works too. It doesn't have to be like an unfinished work. Um, the kind of message that I intended when I put it sort of like, put it out in the world for the audience to see and how that kind of changes does that change your process of if you have something very specific that you want in your work and it's not showing through the audience's eye, does that affect your process of working or does that change how you view your own paintings? Was my question. I mean, it, it probably affects like somehow, but I mean, I, I don't think, I feel like it doesn't affect me what like other people say about my work, but but that's, that might not be true. Like, I don't know, like, um, yes, but um, 
I, I feel to me like whatever audience feels my painting is depends on them. Um, so it doesn't affect me so much, but maybe some people, if, if you have like the nar narratives are so like particular, like if you want to tell the story, it's very particular way. Maybe if the audience took it in different way, maybe you have to change the work. But um, yeah, yeah. I I don't know if I answer well, but that's my answer. Um, Min Young or Charity, do you guys have any thoughts about this? Um, my my thing my, my thought is quite um similar to Takuya's. Um, while I'm painting, I I'm not that distracted by any other's opinion. But after my paintings, um, whenever um the, someone see my painting and then comment or advise me, then and then I um think about that there's um thoughts. And then next work, maybe it would be changed or maybe helpful, but not while the painting. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know if I'm supposed to insert my thought, but this is just a kind of like a thought. I think it, there isn't, you know, it's not a control issue, but I think like it's tricky when you start crossing over to like a narrative that exists outside of the narrative of painting. So I think like, it's so tricky to talk about painting because painting comes with its own language. And then we also impose our human construct language into it. So for example, maybe this is like a better example. Like I made a lot of Chinese paintings. What I mean by that is paintings that capture like, um, cultural events or traditions. Um, for my thesis show, it was it was a painting of a Chinese dragon dancing. Um, and there are people standing inside the Chinese dragon. So it, it really is hard to kind of de detect what it is unless you're a cultural insider. And I remember we were sitting at the crit and one of the panelists or um, painters had said, oh, I really love that cr uh, clown. And automatically that painting shifted direction because now the painting is about a clown, not about a Chinese dragon. So I found that really difficult for me to kind of overcome because then it's like, okay, is it, do I need to paint the Chinese dragon more realistically for people to understand it or is it okay? And I think like partially that has to do with my side of control of like, am I willing to let go of what the interpretation of how people read my paintings but then on the other side it's like okay like am I able to convey at least the sensation of being part of that cultural event through the, the paint and through how colors collide with each other and I think that's a separate narrative um so I I'm still kind of swimming in between those places because it's difficult to I feel like it's difficult to achieve the best of both worlds in one painting so what I ended up doing is actually just letting go of a lot of things and starting from zero. And I've decided to just explore more formal qualities of painting before I insert my own set of narratives or stories that I want people to understand. Um, and sometimes I think those things come later as a result of a body of work from years that you create and people start to understand um, what, where you come from. Um, but that that's my thought. I mean, I mean, feel free since we're all in Q&A, like, I don't know if this is something anyone wants to kind of share. Um, I'm still a very young painter and I feel like I don't really know a whole lot. So we have very seasoned painter. I'm just throwing the ball to Lorraine. <laughs> so if you want to speak about that, I would love to hear from you. I love your paintings. Um, I love your paintings. And I think, yeah. I just don't know what I'm saying right now. So, um, but if anyone wants to speak about that, feel free to pitch in. Um, yeah. 
I hope I that mean, answers. I, I feel like we are young painters, you know? So it's like, I, we all just, I mean, I think that was a good point. Like my own, it's an interesting question, but I think my response to it is like, when I'm painting, um, you know, like, it's always that big question of when do you stop painting on your painting? <laughs> like, when is mm -hmm. it finished? Um, which sometimes, you know, but there's always that moment where I literally hear a click and I'm like, okay, stop. Um, and then sometimes <laughs> I might want to go back, but I know it's like that. I'm like, I'll just put one thing and I'm like, okay. Like it just sinks together and I'm like, okay, I think we're done. Um, and then like when other people comment, it's more like I'm just observing them taking it in rather mm. than taking anything personally, because I'm already like, once that thing happened, I'm already like it, you know, I'm on to the next and um, I'm not gonna, it's not, it's not, not like it's not mine, but it's kind of already like not, it's, I'm just watching people like respond. But then again, like I see so many paintings where I'm like, I should really go back in there. I know what I need to do now, but I'm, you know, sometimes I'll make a, separate paintings of those paintings. Um, to try to see if I can figure it out. I don't know. That would be my response on that. Yeah, thank you. That's really nice. It's kind of like when you're, when you know it's a good stopping point <laughs> to talk to somebody, you're happens. like, okay. <laughs> you're like, no more questions. Let, it's, I'm satisfied. It's like, it stopped it's, for me, so. <laughs> I love that you heard a click. I, I, I was a little concerned. <laughs> no, I <laughs> like you hear a click in your it. brain. <laughs> No, I just see it all just like lock together and maybe, you know, mm. I definitely can see when I make too many marks and I've, come, I've destroyed tons of paintings, obviously. <laughs> like I know when I go too far too, but. Mm. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions or thoughts? Um, if not, I think it's a really good stopping point. It's before 11, it's 10.52. Once again, I'm so thankful that you all joined. I've been super nervous if you can't tell and everything that I've messed up would be captured on the recorded video. Um, thank you um, for staying and um, asking really thoughtful questions and just still being an artist and creating works because I think that's incredibly important for us to just continue to create and have conversations that are important and still have questions that we carry in our um, search for images and the way we create. Um, so um, I think this is a good stopping point. So I'm going to just pause the video.